All right. Tomorrow I am going to Washington, D.C. to once again advocate for the Breast Density Reporting Act, and I will be going with Dr. Nancy Capello, who's joining me today, a breast cancer survivor uh, and also the founder and director of RUDense.org, uh, which is an amazing organization, a great, an amazing website, by the way, if anyone's watching, and you want to see in your state whether there's legislation that requires you to get all the information about your breast density. She's been part of this grassroots operation all around the country fighting for this kind of legislation to be passed state by state. Now we're trying to get this passed federally, which is why the two of us are going tomorrow to Washington. But we're also joined today by Elizabeth Ford, and Elizabeth is a senior producer at the TAP TV network. AliveWithJoan.com is one of the channels on that network. And interestingly, since she started working on this channel a few weeks back as we launched, she is in charge of seeing all this information come up and come over the uh, channel. And she saw the interview I did a few weeks ago with, with Nancy about breast density. And all of a sudden, she started thinking about herself. And Elizabeth, let me bring you in here first and tell us what happened because you had had a mammogram what, sometime in the last year, right? Actually, as I was telling Nancy, I, I hadn't had a mammogram for a couple of years. Oh. You know, I'm one of those people that I've, I've been freelance, you know, when I have a job that has insurance, you know, I would get it done, and I'm a journalist, you know, I'm busy, and so I would make sure I got my pap smear, but I didn't like getting a mammogram, <laughs> I didn't, and I, you know, I just didn't make it a priority, like exactly what you said, there's no uh, history of breast cancer in my family, and that was the one thing that really got to me, that that number, that, that really doesn't matter so much, you know, breast cancer in your family, but then when I saw this thing about dense breasts, I was like, oh my gosh, so many women, I've never heard of this in my life, and especially the story with Nancy, that she'd gone, you know, every year so organized the opposite of me <laughs> nonetheless I can respect that and I called my doctor because luckily California is one of the states that Nancy has um, fought for and they have in the past two years that that the it has to say in the report if you have dense breasts over 50 percent so I called my doctor and I said Am I, you know can you look at my last mammogram and tell me if I do have dense breasts and I called, and the nurse practitioner in the office called me back and said, just like this, yes, you do have dense breasts, but it's nothing to worry about. And then she kind of was done. And I got, like, I can remember you know, seeing Ann Morris from Coleman saying, this makes me so angry. And I was getting angry. And I said, I'm not worried about it, which isn't true because I was totally worried about it. But I said, but I would like for you to refer me to get an ultrasound follow-up because my understanding is that mammogram may not have detected some something that you know that an ultrasound might see she's like okay fine but she was annoyed she was a little annoyed with me for you know because she's like well do you have a fax and oh I guess I'll have to email it well do you have a Mac because sometimes you can't read it like I was like, I called uh, Sarah, your daughter, Joan, right away to like, bah, 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 you know, and um, and so, um, I, you know, luckily I was able to to, you know, I called and I and I went there. But first thing out of the mouth of the woman at the radiology desk is, oh, this is for screening. Well, insurance doesn't pay for that. She said, and Nancy can probably correct her, but she said insurance doesn't even have a code for ultrasound screening in California that we know of. So if you really want this, you'll have to pay cash, which I did. You know, it was $205. And, um, you know, I had the ultrasound, and, you know, I don't have any that, that she could detect. I don't have anything that looks like, you know, undetected. Good, cancer. good. That's good yeah. to hear. So real relief and peace of mind, you know, um, but she did say, you know, the radiologist said, you know, but I can see you haven't had a mammogram in two years. You need to also have a mammogram to look for the early calcification. So then I'm thinking, well, for women with dense breasts, it's not an either or, it's a both. And yeah, you're you absolutely that. right. And you know something, Elizabeth, we have to really make sure that we make this perfectly, perfectly clear. 
it's not that a mammogram should then be passed over if you have dense breasts. You still should get the mammogram. And that is like that standardized test. It's just that if you have the higher your, de your um, density is, the lower the success rate of that mammogram catching cancer because it can literally hide behind dense breasts, but it can also hide behind calcification, which is why you definitely do want to have that mammogram. And as I understand it, Nancy, let me bring you in here. One of the reasons why, I mean, a lot of people think this must all be, all the uh, pushback must just be the insurance companies not wanting to pay for it. But there's been pushback from the medical profession. Uh, part of it is because they don't like mandated medicine. They call this because we're telling them that they have to actually give us the report that is generated when they do the test, which okay, we could go on forever about that. But the other part of it is that they are afraid a message will be sent to women that mammograms aren't important, and they are. Yes, absolutely. So what What about? Let me let me just let's talk about Elizabeth's case. Sure. Um, the idea of there not even being an insurance code for preventive ultrasounds. Is this a common kind of problem across the country? Yes, but I want to go back a little bit. Um, when Elizabeth had her mammogram in 2012, we were working with the California legislature um, with Senator Joe Simitti and Amy Colton, a nurse from Santa Cruz, California, had three invasive cancers missed on mammogram. She found me through the website and she said I want to do what you did Nancy in California and we worked, she worked certainly, I, I certainly gave her some you know, mentoring and I went out to California at least three times. Senator Semini was just phenomenal champion in this. Do you realize, and I just said it's Elizabeth off, offline, that Governor Brown vetoed the first density reporting bill. We finally got it passed. We finally got it, and it's going to come to your answer your question about the doctors. The medical association was against it. The radiologists were against it. It was just crazy. The nurses were for it. Thank goodness for nurses, I'll tell you. They're typically our best friend, except for, I'm sorry to hear that about Elizabeth and a little bit of attitude from the nurse practitioner, but we're going to change that with Alive with Joan, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, you know, when, when we finally passed the bill, and, and, and after it was vetoed, we worked a whole nother year. It finally became law effective um, April 1st, 2013. So right now, Elizabeth, when you go back and have your mammogram, which I have to give a, a, a kudos to the Affordable Care Act, because mammograms are now covered under the Affordable Care Act as a preventive measure. So keep that in mind. You're not going to have to pay out of pocket for your mammogram because it is considered well care. The challenge we have is with the ultrasound, and especially that, as um, as Elizabeth mentioned, her radiologist said a couple of years ago, we never did a screening ultrasound. It wasn't used as a screening, even though Joan and Elizabeth, it was in the literature for you know now 20 years. Yeah. So that's the issue. And that's okay. where you can see the law, the law that she said to me. She goes, once this became a law, people come in here all the time. She goes, I do ultrasound screenings all the time, but everyone pays cash because they heard about it. I feel like they heard about it from areudents.org. I, I heard about it from areudents.org and Joan. Like a well, week. I would Joan. Well, let, me, let, me tell you, let me tell you guys, um, the co-author on my book that's coming out in September told me the other day a story that she went in upstate New York for her mammogram, she goes every year, and she said she went in and she saw for the very first time a big pink sign in the waiting room that said, while we screen for any irregularities, we are also screening for your breast density and we will recommend further screening if you have dense breasts, feel free to ask questions. So she went in and as they were placing her breasts in to be compressed, she said, by the way, I really do want to know if I have dense breasts. And she said the woman said to her in total exasperation, oh, yeah, you and every other woman that comes in here now ever since Joan London was bald on the cover of People. Can you believe that? Good. To which Good. I, I'm not apologizing to radiologists. Yeah, empowering you know, yeah. women. I want to read you something, Nancy, that I have right here. I get, you know, we're getting so many comments and questions into Alive with Joan and, and everybody that's watching, keep your questions and comments coming because literally Alive with Joan, I've now come to realize, is going to be absolutely 
subscriber content. It's going to be every the questions are all coming from everybody that's coming on board. So here's one that just came in uh, yesterday. Our insurance refuses refuses in caps to pay for us. They tell me that the ultrasound is not needed in, by the way, a two-page letter. My doctor says I do. The doctor's at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. So therefore, how can we get the insurance to cover this life or death test? Do you have the magic code numbers that a doctor puts down to have a company pay? Shouldn't they pay for someone with a bad family history like myself? Too many risk factors and the dense breasts a very nasty letter is in the works by me to my insurance company they want you to die or suffer needlessly money's tight we have insurance to keep us healthy I'm so happy that you're doing well but too many of us go untested why do we have to fight like this for a life-saving test so let me um, just talk about a couple of things. Um, first of all, if this woman is higher risk, she may be a candidate, as you know, for an MRI. If she has a 20% uh, risk through a risk assessment, and I'm glad you said that she worked, she went to Sloan and the doctors are working with her and they want to give her the added screening, but she needs to keep that in mind. She may be a candidate for an MRI. An MRI, really, the yield of MRI is really, the, you're going to find the most. And of course, there is some you know, like anything else, Joan, we talked about this, there's always a risk and a benefit. You know, the gadolinium, the contrast, there's a lot of information now that's on the website about the retention in the brain. So there's never anything perfect, as you know. Um, the reason why I like great, um, ultrasound is because it doesn't have any non-ionizing radiation. Yeah, that's and right. It needs around everywhere. Here's the challenge we have with ultrasound in coding. When we first started our, 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 our um, we passed our bill in Connecticut, we had an ultrasound screening bill in 2004, 5 and 6. Believe it or not, nobody was, doctors were refusing. I mentioned this when I was with you um, a couple weeks ago on your show. Doctors were refusing to even do screening saying, just like in, in what Elizabeth heard from the doctor, we don't have a screening code, there's no such thing as screening ultrasound, because they always did it as a diagnostic measure. Now since we've had laws, they are learning to do ultrasound as a screening. And I think, I really, it's because of the work that we've done, but also the work of all the advocates in all the other states who have been pushing for this and then pushing doctors to get good at this. And so, fast forward, there is not a screening code for ultrasound as a, as a screening. However, there are codes that can be used, and again, I don't want to get in the weeds of coding. We really need to get, and I may refer, I have a lot of my doctor friends, who there are a few doctors that actually like me, so I can refer some to you, Joan. I'd love to have somebody come on alive with Joan and talk about coding, who Will really you? understands coding. That would be phenomenal. And I have some context that I can um, put you in. And Nancy, the, the, the woman who did my screening, what I, she said this to me and I love the analogy because she said, you know, before two years ago I had never I had never done an ultrasound screening. She goes, you have to realize a mammogram is a full picture. She's like, I'm shining a flashlight into your breast. So normally they tell me where the where the lump is. I shine a flashlight onto their breast, and I, and she goes, and eighty percent of the time I say it's probably not cancer. She goes, but now I'm learning how to do this whole maneuver where I can get a lot of pictures mm -hmm. and the skill. You know, that's something that that's another that's another layer to this is that she was, I think, experienced, um, but it's harder. It's harder work. And I'll tell you, Nancy, uh, you and I have heard this again and again. This is one of the problems. <clears throat> Whereas a mammogram is a very standardized test, an ultrasound is somewhat technician dependent. Correct. And that's part of the pushback, I think, on the part of the insurance companies and really almost like the medical profession that we've pushed this through because it should have been pushed through because we should all understand if the mammogram is not working. But they're kind of not ready yet to be able to then deal with us and say, okay, so what do you need? Do you need the ultrasound? Is the ultrasound you're getting really going to be sufficient? Do you need an MRI? And believe me, there's a lot of technology coming down the pike. Um, I was at the Miami Breast Cancer Conference, you know, doing that keynote, Nancy, and I saw booths all over the place with new kinds of um, MRIs that are 
less expensive and take a shorter yes, yes, quick MRIs, absolutely. And MBIs and uh, digital automated ultrasounds. I mean, they're trying to come up with the technology yes. to fix this. Well, here's the thing, though, John, and this is what really annoys me. We can't be, and as you know, you can be maybe in every examining room now with a live with Joan, thank goodness, but you really can't be with every woman and say, here, here's how you fight for this. Here's how you advocate for yourself. Here's how you become empowered. Here's the challenge, I believe. In Connecticut, we started in 2005 and six with an ultrasound screening. Folks know this. All around the country, they would be coming to like Miami conferences, and they would go to booths, and, and my friends at GE would say to me, they'd say, yeah, some lady from Connecticut named Nancy is making us do this stuff, which I always would applaud because it really makes me feel good. But here's the point. Why wouldn't the Amer and I've said this to my radiologist friends, why wouldn't the um, uh, college radiology, the American college radiology, who is their neutral on our breast density reporting, why wouldn't they develop standards, like they have standards for mammography, they have standards for diagnostic ultrasound. If they're always complaining about this, let's develop standards for screening ultrasound. I've offered to work with them. That's, to me, that, that would help a lot. Instead of lamenting, let's fix the problem. Let's, let's yeah. make it better. Don't just say, oh, those, those people, they're driving us crazy, these women, there's nothing, you know, there's, no, there's nothing wrong, it's normal density. Yeah, we know it's normal, but we also know that as the density of a woman's breast increases, and here's the two of us here that can vouch for that, the after all the vessel exactly decreases. Both of us are in this position. We both had clean mammograms, and then we got our cancer immediately thereafter, diagnosed in an ultrasound. Exactly. I do want to mention something about the new codes. Okay. CMS, which oversees coding, um, I don't know what it actually stands for. There's a medical word in the middle of it. I believe the M is for medical. Um, they just came out with new coding, um, October effective January 2015. And they have some coding for like 3D, for tomosynthesis. They have coding for bilateral ma uh, ultrasound now, so not just single ultrasound. And some, here's the key, some imaging facilities, the ones that are certainly progressive and proactive, have learned how to code a screening ultrasound. We have women in the state of Connecticut that have been having ultrasounds, as I have, and my insurance covers it, I don't have any high deductible. That's a whole other issue we can we can get into. But so it's the coding. Work with your imaging facility. And again, I found when a woman, uh, you know, you can you can appeal if your insurance denies something. You can appeal it. But, and typically, the first appeal they go with the first appeal and say, no, we're still going to appeal it. We're still going to keep it as we're not going to pay for it. The second appeal typically maybe may get uh, uh, them to pay for it. But wow. it's so really, so we really have to be persistent. Okay. Let me ask you, um, just so the people under, out there understand, 22 states, I believe, yes. have now passed legislation that says that when these reports are generated by our radiologists, when we have a mammogram, because that's the only time you're going to find out, by the way, that you have dense breast, is by having a mammogram, and they, they generate this report, which they've done for a couple decades. In 22 states now, they have to give that report to us. However, not every state says that the insurance has to pay for it. How did it come about, Nancy, that in the state of Connecticut, you actually got the legislation passed that said insurance has to pay, I think, before yes. you got... Yeah. And you know, are there, are there very many other states that have legislation like that? There's four states. And oh, they are... So there's New Jersey has some, um, in some conditions, in certain conditions, typically extremely dense tissue. So um, New Jersey has an insurance card. Indiana, which doesn't have a density reporting bill, they're working on regulations, but they have an insurance coverage in some conditions, certain conditions. Um, Connecticut does. However, if you have a high deductible plan because it's not preventive, you are going to have to, and we've been working for six years, Joan. I mean, I haven't just given up on Connecticut. You know, in, in all the work that I'm doing, we've, went to the, we've been to the legislature for six years after our density reporting law to change the preventive measure for ultrasound to no avail. We did get, if you have a, a um, co-payment in Connecticut, the most you will pay is $20, but co-payment is different than high deductible. I mean, it's, you believe I know. And just, and just so that everybody understands that there, um, there's federal legislation that's been around for a while that insists that the insurance companies pay for that mammogram once a year because it's considered, as Nancy said, wellness. It's considered 
preventive screening. But once you think you found something or once you have to go on to the ultrasound, that's when it becomes, it, go, it falls out of that category into diagnostic yeah. and that's when you fall off fall out of the category where they'll pay for it. And I just want to say one other thing too. Um, the last time I just went in, I just, by the way, got a clean mammogram and ultrasound. Yeah, no. good. So Great. I'm one year out. I got diagnosed last year on June 5th. So last week I got my first clean uh, ultrasound and they looked for a very long time, by the I'm way. I'm sure they did. <laughs> and took all kinds of new magnified pictures because now that I had surgery and chemo and radiation, all the tissue in the right breast is all different. And I asked them while I was there to please give me copies of all the reports that have been sent to my referring gynecologist for the last 10 years, 12 years. Um, and I'm just looking at this, I mean, the last one, um, and, and I'm saying this because for every woman out there watching right now, when you get the letter in the mail from your radiologist, most of us stop up here at the first line that says you have no irregularities. And we say, Phew, thank God for that. Mm -hmm. And then we throw it in the trash can. Keep reading because it's not until all the way down here at the very bottom that it talks about breast density and the fact that quote unquote needs additional imaging evaluation. And I don't even know if every woman would totally get what that means. No, no, no. And that's why it's important to have really health care providers who understand a, a lot of things. I mean, it's not just about density. It's about a lot of things, as we know, when we talk about breast health. But for this particular issue of density, which is a huge issue, as you know, it's the number one predictor of, the, of mammogram missing cancer. Now, again, I want to go back to two things. You mentioned the insurance coverage. One other thing. Illinois has the best insurance coverage for ultrasound. They cover, and they actually, um, they actually uh, copied Connecticut's law, but they put something else in it, which is so phenomenal, that it would be a well care preventative measure. And so wow. Illinois is, but here's the sad part on the other side. They don't have a density reporting law. So most women don't even know that they have dense breasts, even though the ins and their insurance would cover it. So you think about that. I mean, that's the craziness of that. And the other thing I want to mention is mammo first may not be last. I mean, I think it's really important. Again, you're a consumer. Elizabeth's a consumer. I'm a consumer. I still have a good breast. I go for my digital mammogram every year. And I have my ultrasound in between. I have an MR every other year. So mammo first. We are. We believe in mammogram. Mammograms, mammograms certainly are the standard. I want to make sure we get that in. I, we've got to like jump off here, but before we stop, may we also just say, despite all the controversy over whether or not we should do self-breast exams because, oh, God forbid it would raise our anxiety level. And yes, some women have lumpy breasts, um, and so they're so scared that if everyone's going to do breast self-exams that we might be constantly running to a doctor. But if you start doing them in your 20s, and you do them consistently, you start to learn what your breasts feel like on an ordinary basis. And yes, they change a little bit with your menstrual cycle. But if you do it all the time, you'll get to understand that. You'll know your body. And usually, like when women say, how will I know if something's wrong? Every woman I've talked to who has felt a lump has said, you know exactly. when something all of a sudden is there that you never felt before. And you need to go to the doctor right away. Don't say, ah, maybe it's nothing. You go to the doctor. I mean, Nancy, I know you're with me that we'd rather have a false positive yes, or even a needless biopsy yeah. rather than not ever find out we have breast cancer until it's in a later stage. Exactly. Exactly. Lady, could you, before we come off, could you just really quickly tell us what you're going to do tomorrow in Washington because it's exciting? Go ahead, Nancy. Well, you know, we are very pleased that we have a federal reporting bill. We've been working, our Udense advocacy has been working on that for, since 2011. We have one introduced in both the House and the Senate. And we are pleased that Senator Feinstein and Senator Ayotte, Republican Democrat or Democrat Republican, are going to have a Senate staff briefing about the density reporting 
bill and also about the impact of density, what it means. We're very pleased that Joan is going to be the keynote speaker and then I'm going to follow her along with uh, Dr. Smith from the American Cancer Society and we also have Kim Bears from uh, Susan G. Komen for The Cure. So we really, it really is a, a, a time to educate staff because the staff work for other senators as you know Joan and we have to make sure that we get all our senators to support and sign on to the bill so we can get this done. Remember, I need to rescue a dog. I mean, this is time for me to do that. You want to move on. I, it's crazy that we're fighting for this. It's absolutely crazy. But tomorrow morning, uh, we will be there in Washington for the for the briefing so that all these other staffers can go back to their uh, representatives and explain to them why they should sign on to this act. And then um, later, Nancy and I are going to go with a few other advocates and bang on some more doors of other senators and make our plea. And we have found that if you just, you're persistent and you can sit down with them and talk to them and, and be there for an example to them saying, I wouldn't be here today. I might be dead today if we didn't have this information, if I didn't have the other screening. That kind of like puts a face on it, I think, for them. Yeah, and yeah. so that's what we're going to do tomorrow. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you and seeing Sarah and uh, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for your story. That's yeah. you know, again, that's so important. And again, for all the healthcare providers out there, we need you. We we uh, we count on you to help us understand our breast health. And we agree. You know, we don't want to scare women, but you are the ones that they're going to meet. And your attitude and how you present it is so important. All right, Nancy, thank you. Elizabeth, thank you. I'm glad when you finally got your ultrasound, everything was A-OK. -okay. Yes. But now you are in charge of your breast health. Bye. Right. Bye, everyone.